Hello, my darlings, and welcome to a new episode of After Dark Fairy Tales. I got a new one for you all. The title of this one's called The Night Stalkers, but this one is part of the Hot Head series, and yes, it is by Daniel Hayes. So the actual title is The Night Stalkers Hot Head Series. Daniel shared his work with me and wanted me to narrate this one, and I'm very honored that he did, and I get the chance to share it with you all tonight. It's very good, and I hope you guys will enjoy it as well. I know I haven't uploaded in a while, but I've been busy doing a few things, writing a novel, (laughs) or trying to get a novel published, and uh, busy doing other things as well. But I'm glad you guys are still here and supporting the channel, and I want to thank all you guys for the likes and the comments, and I hope that all of you are enjoying the stories, most importantly. So, enough jibber-jabber. You guys ready to find out, hear about the Night Stalkers and find out what it's all about? Well, here we go. The Night Stalkers Hot Hit Series by Daniel Hayes. Stephen sits in Mrs. Livingston's 8th grade English class, staring at the clock like a predator stalking its prey. The seconds tick by in slow motion, like an everlasting time loop. His eager anticipation sends ripples of joy soaring through his veins, creating a rush of exhilaration. It was after all the last period of the day, and Stephen's ragtag group of friends, the Night Stalkers, have big plans for the night. Finally, the second hand strikes three o'clock, and the bell rings like a war cry from an evil monster awakening from a deep slumber. The mad dash begins. Thousands of students enter the hallway, sprinting towards the exit like ants flocking to a small grain of spilt sugar. Stephen sneaks out the back into the playground area and sees his motley crew of misfits waiting for him behind the caged electric generators. He trudges forward through the freshly cut grass, the smell percolating his spring allergies. His eyes are ever vigilant. Teachers are always watching, and one straight glance would be enough to ruin everything. The plan was too important, and the Night Stalkers couldn't afford a setback. Not now, not when they're so close to the goal. Stephen sees little Susie with her light brown hair tied into two pigtails that hang ever so sweetly around her ears. Buster is wearing his black leather jacket and dark sunglasses. Even though it's 75 degrees out, the personification of cool never bows down to the weather. Doug is hiding behind a redontodron bush, popping his head out like a nervous meerkat. What took you so long, Stephen? cried Susie, twiddling her pigtails. Stephen scrunches his face and snaps. I was trying to be careful. Buster shakes his head in frustration. Let's hurry this up. I got me a hot date tonight. Does she have a heartbeat or an air valve? retorts Doug. Buster slaps a fist against his hand. I've had enough. You're a stupid smartass. Better to be a smartass than a dumbass, Doug mumbles. Buster erupts in a fit of rage and runs towards Doug. What did you say to me? That's enough. Calm down, both of you, Stephen says, stepping in between them. Susie runs up and slams her fist into Buster's arm. Cool it, you guys. We need to concentrate on the mission. Buster and Doug take a moment to collect themselves and nod their heads in agreement. Susie gives Stephen a reassuring look to let him know that things are under control. She always has a way of getting through to the guys when things get rambunctious. Doug adjusts his eyeglasses and asks, So, are we still doing this? Stephen clears his throat and looks at everyone to make sure they're paying attention. Yes, 
Do you all remember the plan? Susie smiles and raises her voice. There have been several reports that the Gemstone Public Library is haunted. She places her hands on her hips and continues. It's up to the Night Stalkers to find out if it really is. Stephen nods his head in approval. Well said, Susie. Now are you guys in or out? I ain't no wuss. I'm in, insists Buster. Doug crinkles his nose and says, Well, I guess I'm in too. If I can bring some snacks. Sometimes I get munchy crunchies and I need to nibble on some. Okay, okay, we get it already. Enough of your rambling, shouts Buster. It's settled then, Stephen says with a smile. We go in tonight, but we have to be careful about the security guard. Why does a library need a security guard anyway? Susie asks in bewilderment. Because it's nighttime and a lot of scary bad guys come out in the dark? Stutters Doug. Buster gives him a dirty look and sneers. It's because of the insane violence here in Gemstone City. Something is always burning and it's really starting to mess up my flow, you know? Stephen interjects. All right, all right. Enough chit-chat. Let's all meet up tonight at the library around ten. The Night Stalkers are on the case, shouts Susie. Later that night, the Night Stalkers approach the back of the library, all dressed in black clothes. The silence is deafening as Doug picks the lock on the back door. With a rat-a-tat-tat, the lock springs open to the sounds of gasp in the cool night air. The quartet of mavericks look at each with ascertainment in their eyes. The first step is complete. One by one, they enter through the door, ducking and weaving in between the bookshelves to avoid detection. The library is dimly lit with a soft, natural glow, and the dark green carpet looks like perfection personified. The bookshelves are spaced out evenly in two columns leading up to a robust reading area full of light brown tables and soft comfortable chairs. Hiding behind a bookshelf, the night stalkers hold on to their silence like a special gift from the gods because the security guard is on patrol. Stephen points toward him and motions for the others to be quiet. They all nod their heads and watch as the guard enters the reading area. The guard is wearing a light blue security shirt and black dress pants. With each booming step he takes, a shock wave of vibration soars up through his tree trunk legs, making his belly jiggle. That guy is huge, whispers Susie. Be quiet, would you? utters Stephen. Buster's eyes widen as he sees the guard reach up to wipe thick beads of sweat from his forehead. He dry heaves when the guard flicks the sweat from his hand, sending the droplets soaring through the air. The back of his white hair is soaked with perspiration and sweat stains are spread throughout his uniform. Buster taps Stephen on the shoulder and whispers, I don't think this place is haunted, because if it was, that fat bastard would have died from a heart attack months ago. Anger clouds Stephen's face. I told you to be quiet. Crunch, crunch, munch, munch. The nibbling sounds echo through the silence like a piercing torpedo from a ballistic warship. Stephen winces back and sees Doug stuffing his mouth with popcorn. Flabbergasted, Doug looks back at Stephen and babbles, Um, I'm sorry, I got the munchies. I couldn't help myself. Who's over there? The guard shouts. His footsteps sound like an earthquake blasting towards them. The night stalkers turn and run.
knocking little Susie over in their stampede. They take off like bats out of hell, heartbeats throbbing. Susie slowly stands up, grabbing hold of her knee. She lifts her eyes and comes face to face with the guard. He forcefully grabs her arm and pulls her close. Breathing heavily, Susie can smell his nasty breath. It smells like sour onions and a garbage dump. He gushes in delight. Oh, a little girl just for me. He licks his chubby lips and teases. I love little girls like you. He starts to giggle to himself and continues. My name's Antonio, but you can call me Uncle Antonio if you like. Oh, yes, we are going to have some fun. Oh, yes. Susie withdraws from his grasp, flinching in disgust, choking on her own vomit. Please help me. Please help me. Susie wants to scream, but she is paralyzed in fear. Just then, Buster appears from around the corner, holding a thick red covered book. The guard looks over at him with confusion in his eyes. His creepy smile quickly fades as he hears, Hey, fat ass, reading is fun, demental. Buster throws the book with all his might and it hits Antonio right on the nose. Blood splatters on Susie's pale white face and he releases his grip on her. Buster grabs Susie's hand and pulls her to a running start, away from the madman. She takes off crying with each step as her skin crawls with revulsion. Buster turns to follow, but Antonio pulls out his black baton and clobbers him on the back of the head. Lights out. He falls to the ground with a tumultuous thud, blood gushing from the wound. Antonio steps over Buster's prone body and raises the baton high above his head. This will teach you not to interfere with Big Daddy's tasty treats. At that moment, Stephen hits Antonio across the back with a wooden chair. Antonio falls to his knees and watches the room spin round and round. Doug runs over to Buster and pulls him away from the carnage. Never one in the strength department, Doug's arms start to tremble as his strength starts to dwindle. Pulling herself together, Susie runs over and grabs Buster's other arm. Together, they drag him out of harm's way. Reaching into his backpack, Doug pulls out a bandage and places it on Buster's gushing wound. Don't worry, pal. You'll be okay. You have bandages in that backpack, too, Susie murmurs. Doug looks at her with a wry smirk. Yes, I do, along with munchies and crunchies, and some Snapple tea. Meanwhile, Stephen looks at Antonio, leaning on his knees, with utter contempt and murderous intentions. He lifts the wooden chair again as evil thoughts echo through the dark clouds in his mind. He hurt my friends. He hurt my friends. This is all my fault for believing this place was haunted. I have to make this right. I have to make him pay. Stephen swings the chair, hitting Antonio across the back, causing the chair to explode on impact. Stephen lifts his eyebrows high as Antonio starts to laugh. Slow and steady at first, and then loud and hysterical as he rises to his feet. You think that can hurt the great Antonio? Stephen looks into Antonio's evil eyes with trepidation fills his soul. He runs over to his friends and yells, Come on, we gotta get out of here. This guy is really mad now. They all turn their heads simultaneously to see Antonio slowly walking towards them. Blood is flowing down his face, making him look like some crazy zombie from one of those horror flicks. The Night Stalkers grab Buster, who is still unconscious, and drag him towards the front exit. Antonio is hot on their trail, inching closer and closer. Susie 
runs over to unlock the front door, leaving Doug and Stephen to carry most of the weight. There's no time to waste, and they need to get away. Antonio walks over to his security station and grabs a loaded shotgun from his locker. In one swift motion, he pumps the shotgun and aims it at the Night Stalkers. They look at each other with doom in their eyes. Please don't kill us. Please don't kill us, cries Stephen. Give me the girl, and maybe I'll let you twits leave here with your lives. Pop! I got it! The door's unlocked, shouts Susie. Antonio's eyes light up at the sound of her voice. Oh, yes, that's the sound of my girl. Come here, sweetie. Sweetie, or your friends are dead. At that very moment, the dim lights start to flicker on and off. Antonio looks around and sees a dark figure standing in the reading area of the library. He squints his eyes to get a better look. He notices the figure is wearing a trench coat and a fedora hat. Wisps of black smoke flow from his body like a burning corpse. His face is clouded in darkness, masking his features. Who, who are you? A cop or something? Antonio stutters. The shadow pulls out a long sword and holds it out from his body. Black flames spark to life around the sharp blade like a flame to a match. The Night Stalkers watch on in curious amusement. I know what you did, boy, the shadow says. Antonio shakes his head in confusion. I didn't do anything, but I tell you what I'm going to do. Blow your ass to kingdom come. Antonio points the shotgun at the shadow and pulls the trigger. Boom. The shadow raises his blade in a sweeping motion, blocking the shot. Ping, ping, ping. Antonio ruffles his forehead and screams, What the hell are you? The shadow chuckles to himself and sneers, <laughs> I am a debt collector, and it's time to pay the devil. Antonio starts to tremble. How much money do you want? I'll pay anything you want. As a lifelong pedophile and rapist, you should have known that eventually the bill would come due. You will pay, boy. The shadow chuckles again and finishes with your life. Suddenly, a boisterous growl reverberates through the entire building, shattering all the windows. Stepping from the darkness, a mighty hellhound emerges, an enormous wolf-like creature with fire in his eyes and a mangy black smoky fur sits down beside the shadow. The Night Stalkers gawk in amazement. What the hell is that thing? Antonio cries. Oh, you haven't met Hothead. <laughs> Retorts the shadow. The shadow raises his shadow blade and points it at Antonio. Hothead pounces through the air like a speeding jet getting ready to crash into a mountain. Antonio quickly fires another round at the beast, but it's no use. The pellets ricochet off Hothead's body, and he lands right in front of Antonio. Hothead swings his mighty paw towards Antonio's robust stomach, ripping the flesh away. Antonio screams in terror as his intestines spill to the floor. With eyes wide open, he reaches down to hold them in. Blood sprays out like a shower, and Antonio quickly goes into shock. Hothead slowly opens his maw and spews forth a fiery inferno, roasting his flesh. Hothead pounces on him and tears him limb from limb, devouring every last fatty barbecued morsel. The insatiable hunger now at ease. Hothead burps a fiery flame. 
the night stalkers watch in disbelief as Antonio dies before their eyes. Susie cries out, You see, guys? I told you there were ghosts in this library. The shadow slowly turns his head towards them, meeting their eyes. He holds a single finger up to his puckered lips and whispers, Shh. The lights start to flicker again, like a pulsating strobe light, and the shadow and the beast vanish into thin air. The Night Stalkers stare at each other with mouths wide open. Buster starts to come around and ask, What the hell did I miss? Stephen and Doug speak in unison. You will never believe it. Buster looks over at Susie with a puzzled look on his face. Susie smiles and declares, You just missed all the fun. We just proved that ghosts are real. Stephen helps Buster get up on his feet, and the Night Stalkers walk out the front door together, hand in hand. They walk a few feet away from the library and turn back around for another look. A sense of pride fills them despite the horrible events that had happened. They look at each other with an unspoken bond and a sense of accomplishment. A disturbing crunching noise ruins the moment. They turn to Doug and see him eating popcorn. Eating is my way of coping with stress. I might have a few restless nights, but I'll be okay. Doug smiles and speaks with his mouth full. What? I'm still hungry. Susie takes a long deep breath and releases her built up tension. The idea of Antonio wanting to use her as his own personal sex toy really sent chills down her spine. I'm a tough girl, and it will take more than that creep to ruin my life. She raises her hands and shouts out into the night, The Night Stalkers have done it again! Buster rubs his hand over the lump on his head and smiles. Girls like scars. It's a sign of a real badass. I just can't believe I missed all the action. He looks at Stephen and asks, What should we do next? Stephen looks up to the stars with a twinkle in his eye. We made it out of this mess with our lives. I almost got us killed thinking we could prove ghosts were real. But we're not dead. Something saved us. I don't understand what happened, but I think we need to find out the answers. He looks at the Night Stalkers with renewed determination and replies, I think our world just got bigger. We need to spread the word about what we saw here tonight. People need to know the truth, and the Night Stalkers are the only ones who can do it. In the distance, a sharp piercing howl impales the night, sending shockwaves throughout Gemstone City. Everyone closes their doors and turns on their lights. So, what did you guys think about that hothead installment? Did you like the Night Stalkers? Kind of a Stranger Things feel, I think. I loved, I loved it, and I want to give all credit to Daniel Hayes. And please check out his Reddit, his Ritzy page. I posted the link in the description box where you can check out this story and his other stories on Ritzy as well. But I give all props to Daniel for sharing this one and uh, another added collection to the Hothead Chronicles. I enjoyed it and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And uh, I'll be back next time or soon with another After Dark Fairy Tale for you guys. You all let me know what you thought about this one in the comments below. And uh, just let me know if you liked it or not. <laughs> but I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, I want to thank all of you again for stopping by and listening and enjoying your stories, most importantly, and, and my narration, I guess. But I hope you all enjoyed this one. And uh, I'll be back again. And until next time, good night, my darlings. <laughs>